there was actually one preacher who who said something and that that hit me um and and what he said was let your yes be yes and your no be no but and that could mean a lot of things to a lot of people but to me i i knew what he was talking about and i was like you want to say yes to sin or you want to say no to sin mm. and that was really the defining moment of my life where i really from then on com- really committed to christ Hey everyone, welcome to the Jesus King Podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. Today I'm with Abraham and I'm also with Ivan. Ivan is a new face. Um, you haven't seen him before. So how are you doing, Ivan? Yeah, I'm doing great. Good. Could you introduce yourself? Give us a few seconds. Tell us yeah. about who you are. Yeah, so uh, obviously uh, you said my name. My name's Ivan. I uh, live in Sydney, been involved in a few uh, different churches, uh, different men's ministries. Um, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great, man. So that that's something that we also deal with here. So it's it's going to be pretty fun having you around. Um, today we're actually going to be speaking about holiness. And the reason why we want to talk about holiness is because we're starting to see a lot of ugly stuff happening in the churches. And often sometimes when church deals with ugly stuff, really they try and hide it there there is that sense of shame right when it comes to sin there's that sense of shame but we're starting to see a lot of it creeping into the pulpit yeah it's right it's it, it's right there in front of you it's becoming public and people are embracing it now yeah or they and, redefine what it what it is it's not sin it's more you know this is my trauma or this is my weakness or whatever and so they don't label it as sin as though so wouldn't you say like if you have a weakness or a trauma you will go and deal with it well so for example just on that there was a pastor i know who was confronted by one of his the members of his congregation because his he swears he's a trumpeter like he just swears Pastor, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, and, so he preaches and swears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that does it all? And um, and he was confronted, and he's like, "Look, uh, you can't judge me based on this. Okay, um, this is not a sin issue. This is a personal conviction issue, right?" Are you and, joking, right? No, no, I'm not joking. And so he actually rebukes the member for confronting him, and so we're seeing this great divide between being a being worldly. And being restrained into a you know a level of holiness, especially for those who are leading. I mean, you have a higher standard here. So not only are they public about their shame and their sin. Yeah, but they've really defined it. It's not sin. It's they don't accept a rebuke. No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this that's, is what happens uh, if, you, if you redefine or if you like the parameters and the boundaries of sin. If you keep you know expanding those boundaries, there's no limit to what you can do. Right. Yeah. It's a personal conviction issue. And so this is one of the things that I've been we've been seeing lately. You know, we saw that big one with the whole, you know, ex male stripper or whoever it was in the stronger men's conference in the US. So that was a big issue. And for some people, they're like, oh, you know, it, it was fine. There's no issue there with the guy taking off his shirt and, you know, Climbing up a pole. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I guess. I guess for me, it's interesting because uh, becoming in, going into Christianity. Like I grew up in the church, mm. and but there were two different, distinct parts of my life. Yeah, mm. there was, you know, pre my personal actual commitment, and and one of the main things that defined that was being sanctified and holy. That you know, I come to church every week when I was younger, let's Mm -hmm. say in my teens, but I used to do what I want. You know, God was just there to forgive me whenever I wanted. Uh, So Sunday, Sunday Christian. Sunday, Sunday Christian, you know, for the first two hours of Sunday, Mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and it was actually, there was actually one preacher who who said something and that that hit me. Um, And and what he said was, let your yes be yes and your no be no. But, and that could mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But to me, I, I knew what he was talking about. And I was like, you want to say yes to sin 
or you want to say no to sin. Mm -hmm. And that was really the defining moment of my life where I really, from then on, com really committed to Christ. Wow. It was defined by holiness. And, and, and then I said, yeah, look, I'm going to say no to this stuff. I'm going to say no to what my friends do, um, yeah. the things that I was involved with, you know, the lust, um, you know, viewing sexual immorality, um, things like that. That the defining moment was me to say no to those things. Yeah, and yes, to, and that's what I, I felt made me. That's Christian. really good, actually, and, and I think that's where we have to be aware. We have to be able to define what holiness is then, and what worldliness is, because oftentimes we don't define yeah. it, especially it's like the younger ones. You yeah. know, we. The it's like calling dimension. good evil evil good. Yeah, yeah. If you can't have the right definition for what sin is, yeah. and obviously it's what God defines as sin, yeah, yeah. and what God defines as good. If you do, if you if you're not agreeing with God, then you have a big problem because your scales are not calibrated, mm -hmm. right? You're like, hmm. God says this is wrong. Yeah. But I say it's yes. The culture says. Am I going to agree with God? or Am I going to agree with myself? So who am I going to trust more? Um, sorry to cut you guys out, but um, I, I think this is leading us into two groups, right? One is personal holiness, mm -hmm. and one is having, as a group, as a church, living a life of holiness. Mm -hmm. How can we live a life of holiness personally. on our own, yeah. personally? And how can we encourage others to live a life of holiness? So do you guys want to start with the personal holiness? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I think we're touching on both things mm -hmm. i think it'd be a good idea um i can start it off um personal holiness is, is that is that step that you take with the lord that you're in agreement of saying that god's nature and god's way of life is better and it is more satisfying it is a blessing to me rather than the nature of the world and the way of life of the devil so many times, I th and I see this people wrestling when it comes to holiness. Why does God say no about this? Yeah. Like yeah. this seems so fun or this seems so good. Why does God say no? Mm -hmm. And I think there they saying that, hmm, I don't see God's way to be the best way. Yeah. I think in my own wisdom, I see that God made a mistake here and I think he's in the wrong. I think he put boundaries where there shouldn't be any boundaries. A lot of people deal with this issue, right? It could be, for example, fornication, right? Yeah. I mean, it's so much fun. It's satisfying. You're not hurting anyone. People have these questions in their mind, and they're like, I'm struggling with my personal holiness because I see God being a bit, too strict yeah, or a bit yeah. too i guess maybe closed minded sometimes he's not letting me he's not letting me express myself yeah <laughs> what i find interesting about that is that we say you know if god has said you know do not commit fornication yeah, yeah. from your example um but as a person it's so fun and i want to do it but what is actually happening is people in the world like if you do like a study, study on family, uh, non you know, secular, non non religious, mm -hmm. they're actually finding, yeah, that was actually right. Yeah. So God, you know, they're saying um, the bet. You know, people talk about how to be a great mother, and you know, this whole feminist movement yeah, that's yeah, happening, yeah. and that people want to be single mm. mothers. Yeah. And then they came out with a study, and they're showing the best the the way you can be the best mother is when you have. A father who can support your needs yeah, yeah. That, that is like one of the foundation of being a good mother is having a father there who supports you protects you you know that the nuclear family. family yeah the model and so secular like you know research is finding out that you know maybe, god, maybe god was right maybe god. Yeah. <laughs> and i think that's where people need to discover that if you're disagreeing with God, yeah. it's most likely because you're seeing things on the surface. Dig deeper and know why God is saying no. Mm. I think that's that really helped me 
in my life of holiness in in that walking with Christ daily to be like okay you might feel like if only God said yes to this be, it would have yeah. been a great life yeah. but it's not it's got a lot of consequences in your life so maybe you should back off and look at it again from a biblical perspective yeah i i think that's why reading the bible helps you start to see the nature behind each of these sins that you feel like desperately so much god if only you would let for example swearing okay if you let pornography okay mm -hmm. if you let you know this foul talk okay because it's just a joke and we're just hanging out as mates yeah if only you would let that be okay but then when you look at the bible jesus comes saying wait if your hand causes you to sin chop it off and you're like wait that's crazy Both that's gone yeah that's crazy language it's like it's better to get into the kingdom like maimed for yeah. example then go to hell as a whole person yeah and you're like okay now i see why jesus is being so strict about this so mm. serious about this if you look at a woman with lust you commit adultery if you hate your brother is being or being angry with your brother it's like committing murder and you're like okay now i see that holiness is not only an act of what i do on the outside but also my intentions on what's in inside so i feel like when you come to god and god restores you in christ right you're saved by his blood and his resurrection and you're like Okay, God wants me to be holy in and out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything about me needs to be the way God that, wants it to that's be. That's really interesting. I was watching a documentary about prison systems in there was about a prison in 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 the US and uh you know they're trying to rehabilitate all these people who've committed these, you know, uh, hideous crimes. And and one of the ways that they do this training uh is they make them repeat, you know, they say where the mind goes, the body follows. Mm, okay. And this is like, this is prison rehabilitation. And they're telling the, the inmates there, they're, they're saying, you know, where the mind goes, the body follows. And they're mm. repeating that and repeating that. And, you know, and as you're saying, as, as Jesus was saying, you know, if you look at someone or if you're angry at someone, mm. um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. clear. People are starting to realize. Yeah. Uh, another thing um, you mentioned, so I think there's two parts to it. Um, the Bible clearly says a lot of times, you know, sin leads to death. God doesn't want us to be going to destruction. God loves us. Amen. Right. Um, and, and, but he says sin leads to death. But the other part um, where Jesus was talking about cut it off, cut your hand off, you know, pluck your eye out. Um, that's Jesus' way of telling you how to deal with temptation. In mm. other words, what he's saying is, you guys are weak. Don't tempt yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't tempt yourself because, you know, I don't want you to, to die. I don't want you to fall into destruction. So it's better to cut it off. Hmm. Don't, don't try and be strong. Don't try and be a hero. You yeah. see something, yeah. get rid of it. That's the way you're going to survive. Run. Mm. Yeah. That, that's what it is. You resist the devil. You yeah. flee from these temptations. Yeah. And it's... It's crazy how sometimes pride creeps in. It's another sin that creeps in yeah. and say, oh, that's okay. Yeah. You, you, you have a problem with drinking? That's okay. You're a Christian. Go to a club and you won't drink and you find yourself drunk yeah. the next day. <clears throat> and, and it's like one sin is encouraging another sin prove how, to, prove to how manifest strong, itself. Prove how morally good you are. Go to a club and prove that you can't yeah. drink. Yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. It's, like, well, it's then, crazy. This is what, yeah, one of the things especially in doing therapy and counseling, you have a lot of people who've had histories with alcohol, they've had history as sexual addicts or whatnot. And then they get to a place where they've gone six months, maybe even a year without it. And they're doing really well. And they're like, you know, I think I'm strong enough. I'm going to try a drink. Just, just that one. Yeah. And they do it. It's yeah. all over. It. And it's worse than when they, you know, when they started. And so you don't want to be, like you said, you don't want to be playing with fire 
and you don't want to put yourself in that situation. And this is why the word of God is very clear, very adamant. Flee. You know, it, it doesn't prove anything for you to head face to face with it. There are certain sins where God does say wrestle with it, right? But there are others where it's like, no, flee. And sexual immorality is one of those. I would say even alcoholism and that kind of thing. It's one of those if you have a history with it. Just like but, yeah. Joseph. Flee, run, run. He ran away. Part of his wife came yeah. to tempt him and he just walked away. He yeah. didn't need yeah. to deal with it. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of it, that if you're no longer in the picture, there's no more temptation. That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, as long as you're lurking around your temptation, mm-hmm. the, what's seducing you, it's easy to fall into that. Yeah. yeah. Because that voice, you might reject it the first few times, but bit by bit, it starts to get louder and louder and more and more seductive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's always, don't, don't test yourself, don't show how great you are, just walk away, run away from these temptations. Yeah. So in speaking about holiness, I, I did want to touch on one thing because you, you, you mentioned this idea of from within, mm. right? And this is where there can be a danger when we talk about it holiness from a legalistic perspective because it's very behavioral so it's showing the world what you look like rather than looking on the inside and jesus had a lot to say about that with the pharisees he's like you guys are clean the outside of the cup but the inside is foul and it's a stench it's dirty um and he's like first clean the inside all right and then you can deal with the outside it flows out from it Um, And one of the things, especially in Christian history, we've kind of followed on from the pharisaical kind of idea where it's like, well, all right, yeah, let's say you're swearing or let's say you're um, fornicating or whatnot. Just stop the behavior um, instead of dealing with that inner issue. Mm -hmm. And that inner issue is this spiritual separation and it's, it's a spiritual disfellowship or you're not fellowshipping with God and communing with him. Mm -hmm from in your own personal life and so the symptoms are outward and so what we want to do is we want to be like look yes the behavior is wrong of course we're not going to discount that but the ultimate issue is your heart your heart is far from god yeah so you can deal with the behavioral and your heart can still be very far from god and you can still be very unholy inside as the pharisees were they were unholy they were unrighteous they looked pure and so we want to be careful speaking to, you know, the audience and whatnot and be like, look, we don't want behavioral change alone. We want the heart change. That's what rebirth is about. And this is one of the things you, we, we will, I've been reading through the Old Testament, the book of Judges, 1 Samuel. In Judges, it's interesting because it, it says um, there was no king in Israel and everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Right, And that's one of the things that tends to happen when the heart is in disfellowship. God is not your king. When you're not having communion with God, God is not your king. And the physical or the decision-making process is all arbitrary based on what you feel at that time is good or evil. And so the first thing we're looking at is where is your heart? And this is why God chose David to be king is because he was a man after the heart of God. He sinned. He did some terrible things. We can get into that. But um, his heart was after God. And in those sins, what did he do? He ran back to God in repentance. And there was change. But it started here. And so we want to look at the cleansing of the inside, the regeneration of the inside, the rebirth of the inside, and the continual sanctification on the inside, that then the body and the actions follow. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because... Part of the Exodus series that Jordan Peterson's doing, mm-hmm. um, some of the some of the Jewish scholars they're like, oh, it's not like us. We don't we don't have the same Christian perspective. Like God doesn't really care so much about what's going inside of you; he cares about your actions. Really, and there was so much verses yeah. flowing in my head from the Old Testament. No, a circumcision of the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. God cares so much about yeah, what's yeah. inside. That's the primary. And the that's, outside. Yeah. That's Be- the fundamental. Because he's the God of all. Yeah. He's if, if he was the God of your flesh, then whatever your flesh does, that's all he cares about. Yeah. But yeah. he's the God of the flesh, the soul, and the spirit. 
And he wants all mm. to be in submission to his will. Um, we got to move on to how we can encourage other people around us to live a holy life. Mm. Um, so what are some of your, I guess, um, some of the things that you do personally that helps you encourage others to live a holy life? Um, I'll start with how I grew up in my youth. Right? Mm -hmm. this, was, this was probably the, the crux of it for mm -hmm. me. Because growing up in this culture, yep. it's a very anti-God culture. It's a very carnal culture. And especially growing up in your teen years, you're just the temptation. It's the devil's playground. And one of the things that I learned is holiness is the antidote to worldliness. So it's like, if you don't want to be worldly, if you don't want to live as the world lives, because we are in the world, but we're not of the world. If you don't want to live in that way, and I didn't, I had a desire not to live that way, then I would have to live a different way, the mm -hmm. complete opposite. And what does that look like? And so it started with the devotional life. It started with, you know, the basics. And, and people don't like to emphasize it, but it's always important. Reading the Word of God, prayer, fasting. Right? Those were the most important. And also being solidly um, uh, rooted in a local church as well, under authority, mm -hmm. spiritual authority as well. That was very important too, because you're especially growing up, if you're younger, there's a lot of weakness. There are a lot of things that you're battling that you need expertise. You need people who have gone through it to keep you accountable, people that you are spiritually accountable to as well. So those are the basics. All right? What's your devotional life looking like? Are you in prayer? Are you in constant um, desire of God? And are you in a constant like hunger for Him? Mm. Right? That is... That's going to precede holiness. That's going to precede a lack of worldliness in your life. So if you don't do those things, I guarantee you, you cannot. The, the worldliness will be your mark. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Ivan? Um, yeah, so I absolutely agree um, with what Abraham has said. Um, you know, being close with God, praying, just opening your heart to God and, and the Spirit sort of convicts you what to do, what not to do. Uh, but in terms of actually, you know, helping others, influencing others, I've had some very interesting things, you know. Uh, when I first came to Christ, uh, I was working, doing some temp work in factories. And uh, obviously, I've stopped swearing, whereas mm. prior, it was, you know, yeah. normal. You have, you have to swear. And then uh, one person, one lady, she just pulled me up. She's like, you know what? You know what I noticed about you? <laughs> you never swear. <laughs> and the the thing that sort of was interesting is I never even thought about it. I never thought about, oh, I'm going to try and stop myself from swearing so that they see me. And and that's where the whole inward thing, yeah, it, just... it comes out. People see it. And I, I think that's a big influence on other people's life is when when the Spirit is moving your life and you're changing your ways, other people see it. Like being a role model. A role model, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Like it shows people that it is possible yeah. to stop that sin. Yeah. Um, it is possible to live that lifestyle, right? And and you see that in another person's life. Uh, one of the points that I, I was actually thinking as you guys were talking about is um, sometimes people don't know what to replace sin with, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, for example, like foul language, dirty jokes, can be changed into biblical discussions, mm -hmm. right? Talk about the work of God that he's doing in your life, what he's doing currently in your life, what you're praying about, what you're reading about. Yeah. And this kind of changed the whole atmosphere of what we used to say into what we're talking about right now. And that can also be about other things, right? Uh, for example, if I only knew women to be an object of sex, now I can create a new relationship. I have sisters in the church. I can discuss things, you know, to them about, right? We can talk about life. We can talk about other things. I see value in them that I did not see before, mm. right? Or my only value about, for example, a woman would be, oh, yeah, she's just pretty or she's wearing this or 
she's doing that but yeah. now it's like oh she's my sister in christ yeah you know th- there's so much more we can talk about yeah so i think that you know that that perspective of replacing sin of what god intended this to be yeah. mm-hmm. right that's that's a really yeah. good point um actually uh emptiness is um one of the main ways that satan can come in and yeah. I, I heard a saying um and i think it's from brazil which you probably know i i probably. think oh, sorry documentary and it says an empty mind is a playground for satan mm. they use that saying a lot okay um so i'll ask my wife but yeah, <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like something a brazilian would do. <laughs> so yeah absolutely yeah. emptiness and and needing to replace people so focused on you know stopping the sin yeah stopping oh what you know why how can i stop drugs every day you know mm. and and then they don't realize that it actually needs to be replaced yeah. or something. Yeah. And this is what we did this on when we were talking about Emil and I, when we were talking about Eastern spirituality. This is the defining factor between Christianity and majority of the others. It's Eastern religions will teach you empty your mind mm-hmm. and you won't have the desire. Right? But then it's going to replace a different desire with it, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas the word of God is renewing your mind. So yeah. you're, you're looking at not emptying, but renewing. So the old comes out and then something new is coming in to replace and you have a new desire. And that happens in regeneration, but also happens in sanctification as well. So as the old has gone out, your old flesh, you've been crucified with Christ. There's this new body, inner man that's being developed and it's growing and this new man, this inner man that's growing, you have to feed. And as you're feeding it, he's more hungry and more hungry. And so there's the replacement. And that renewal comes by the word of God. That faith is increased by the word of God. And this is why it's so important, especially if you're new in the faith or let's say you've had a bit of a hiatus and you're coming back to God. And um, it's so important that the word of God is and prayer is foundational. Right. It's foundational in your life. You prioritize it. This is the only way that you're going to get to a place where you're no longer worldly and you can be holy as God is holy. Yeah, that's nice. It's also kind of connects with the concept of being born again, mm-hmm. right? You're not just dying mm-hmm. and you stay dead. You die and you have a new birth. It, yeah. You have a, a new creation. I like how Paul says that the old has gone. The old mm-hmm. has passed away. Behold, you you are a new creation, the new has come. Mm. And I think that w- when we lose the sin, we don't need to mourn the death, mm. but we need to celebrate, celebrate the new birth, Yeah, right? Yes. So we have something new in Christ. It's something better than yeah, what we had, yeah. Obviously, better and eternal, right? Um, any last thoughts from you guys? Do you have any last thoughts? Um, I guess there's a lot of things that I want to say through the podcast, but you know, time's limited. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. On, honestly, last thoughts about it. Holiness is eternal. It is lasting. It is not temporary. It's not fleeting. And so it's kind of in the same vein as what Christ said, seek first the kingdom of God. And that is holiness and righteousness. Remember, Paul speaks about this in Romans 14. The kingdom is not about eating and drinking. It's not about the things of the flesh and, and doing the things that that feeds your your carnality. It's about joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So we look to that. We look to the kingdom and and God's got this. You know, He'll take care of the rest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one last thought I would share is that holiness is not just a high standard. It's actually displaying the nature of God because mm. God says, be holy for I am holy. So when we live a holy life, we're actually living out the way God lives himself, living out in his nature. Mm-hmm. And I like in First John chapter 3, it speaks about the children of God and the children of the devil. It says the one who practices righteousness is a child of God. But the one who abides and, and sins is a child of the devil. Yeah. So by living your life, you're actually displaying who your dad is, yeah. right? And you could confess that God is your father all day. But if you're living like the devil, then God's going to yeah. disagree with you on that comment, right? But like, no, look at your life. See how you're yeah. living. 
right? So I would encourage you, don't don't live like the devil and claim to be a child of God. I just encourage you to take your spiritual life very, very seriously, as Jesus did. He says, if something causes you to sin, chop it off. And he's using that strong language for a reason. So hopefully you've been blessed by it. Uh, please, if you think someone needs this message, share it with them. Uh, if you want to like and subscribe, because we hardly say that, uh, please do as well. Um, yeah, God bless you and take care. See ya.